It's the Virgil Boy. I really like this thing. I think it's really underrated. Could have done a lot better. The marketing probably fell over for it and it was pushed out too soon. All that sort of stuff. I don't think this thing should have failed like it did. It was released mid-95 and it was discontinued late-95. It was on the market for five months. North America got 14 games. I've only got 12 of them. Japan got 19 games. Worldwide, there were 22 unique titles. This thing had what's called stereoscopic video. Each eye gets given a slightly different image to make things look truly 3D with real depth perception. VR headsets, 3D cinema that sort of stuff all use stereoscopic imagery. The Virtual Boy takes six AA batteries which fit into a battery pack that clips onto the back of the controller. It's not the only thing that makes the controller unique. It has two D-pads and it's completely symmetrical. The L and R buttons on this are round like the front buttons. They feel pretty nice too. The power switch is actually on the controller not the console which makes sense because that's where the batteries are. Battery life on this thing is about four hours which can get expensive in a hurry. Nintendo thought of this though and sold an adapter tap separately which allowed you to use your Super Nintendo power supply. If you didn't already have a Super Nintendo you could also buy the Super Nintendo power supply separately to the separate adapter tap for the Virtual Boy. You could also buy replacement eye shades. These are removable. They knew that they would get gross and disgusting. These are a real problem for collectors now. A lot of people make their own. Many Virtual Boys turn up without them at all, which makes it pretty awful to play. You really need to keep the light out of your face. The stand is removable and folds up for storage or for transport. Underneath it has the cartridge slot, controller slash power port, an EXT port, which was going to be used for linking systems together, but never did. Headphones and volume. On top, there's an IPD control, which is the distance between the centers of your eyes, and a focus slider, which is self-explanatory. If you want to play this for an extended period, you really need the perfect height, table, and chair. I don't have those. It's just going to be uncomfortable. I found this position is best for playing the Virtual Boy. Hands around the base. Many people will try and hold the controller like this, squished up against your body. It's not very good. This way is best. Except I'm not going to be able to play like that today because I have to use this ghetto capture rig, which is literally my old iPhone strapped to the front of it. Nintendo actually recommended that people under seven years old don't play this for extended periods and they added this automatic pause option which pauses the game every 15 to 30 minutes. I don't want that. This is Mario's Tennis. This has some excellent 3D effects with the ball, which you won't be able to enjoy any of because I can only record one side of the Virtual Boy and you can probably only play back one side. There are really only two characters worth playing in Mario Tennis and that's Koopa and Toad. That's because they can dive for the ball and no one else can. Until that happens. Out. The Virtual Boy is another system with a really unique display. This one's not entirely for the better. The games are completely monochrome in black and red. There's a good reason for this. It's because the Virtual Boy was too early. Nintendo made a color prototype, but it was going to be way too expensive. LCDs at the time were awful. They were either super expensive or had crazy motion blur, which made things almost unplayable. So they went for a weird LED display. The way this display works is it has one vertical row of LED pixels. Then it has mechanical mirrors, which oscillate really fast to spread them across your field of view. If you put your ear up against the Virtual Boy when nothing's playing, you can hear a very faint hum from the mirrors moving so fast. This game is really hard. I've never managed to get very far in it. But the control scheme's pretty cool. You've got a D-pad for each hand and then you punch with the L and R buttons. It's also a really good example of the depth perception, which you can't see for reasons mentioned earlier. How's he charging up his moves? I didn't do it. Yeah, alright. In 1995, there was a Kevin Costner movie called Waterworld, so it was perfectly timed to get a Virtual Boy game. This game's all about saving the good guys and shooting the smokers, which are the guys on jet skis. Um, and you've pretty much seen the entire content of this game just does this forever, at least as far as I've gotten. The Virtual Boy had better system specs than the Super Nintendo. This game kind of shows that. Vertical Force is a really fun shoot 'em up where you go between two layers. It's really hard for me. I'm playing through the iPhone screen, so I don't get near the 3D. I can't really tell what enemies are at the top layer and the bottom layer. more 3D effects that you can't see. The Virtual Boy was pushed out too soon because they wanted to divert the resources to the Nintendo 64. This game's a bit of an example of that. It feels unfinished. It's called Red Alarm. It's kind of Star Fox-ish gameplay. It's a wireframe, which can be okay, except everything's transparent. You can see through the walls and other ships and all of that stuff. Oh, I'm doing a terrible job of playing it too. The other thing is, it comes up on the screen telling you what it is. The whole time you're playing, it just scrolls up saying it's Nintendo Virtual Boy Red Alarm. It's like it was a tech demo and they forgot to take that out before they turned it into a retail game. The gameplay is decent. The draw distance is not very decent. 
example, I'm in a big room right now with this boss in the middle of it, but it doesn't really feel like it unless I get to the sides of it. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's fair. It's hard to play in tiny vision on the phone. First time I was looking into the Virtual Boy, I came across this game. That's clearly Bomberman. The US title is Panic Bomber. I was so keen to play Bomberman on the Virtual Boy. Let's go. Blocks? These ruins are your home. Okay. Just floating around, want me to play? It wasn't Bomberman. It's just a Bomberman themed puzzle game. I really wanted a Bomberman game. It does show on the box that it's a puzzle game, so I suppose people who are buying it new weren't really disappointed, but I kind of was. Virtual Boy Wario Land is just like you'd think. It's a really solid Wario Land game. Ow. It's got 3D effects like this. It's a really good platformer. It's games like this that make me sad that the 3DS never got Virtual Boy Virtual Console. These would have been great re-released on the 3DS. Golf is golf. Funky. This is getting silly. I'm obviously doing something wrong. You can see the mirrors get up to speed as I turn it on. The image stretches around and then stabilizes. Welcome to space world. Let's go. Let's go. So Galactic Pinball is really hard. Oh, that's clever. They've made it a puck instead of a pinball so they don't have to animate it. We've got a bonus chance. Not sure what to do with it though. Ah, oh, I think the hole up there stopped moving. Yeah, bonus. Nice. Oh, okay, I'm done. This console never got an actual Mario platformer. Mario Clash is about the closest thing. Kind of got 80s arcade vibes, but in 3D. It's just the same thing over and over again, except for it gets harder each level. This is Virtual League Baseball. This one's Japanese because I don't want to open my sealed American one. And I failed. Let's see if I can show you these displays working. Nintendo made this piece a removable part of the bottom case. Looks like it was done to make injection molding easier, but also so they could attach different kinds of stands to the bottom. I'm guessing the kiosk units had something else screwed on here. Oh dear. And they really have crammed a lot in this. Well, that was scary. Inside the Virtual Boy, we've got two main PCBs. I tried looking up what all the chips are so I could tell you, but I didn't find anything particularly conclusive and I don't want to lie to you. So these chips make it work. There's a little board here with the EXT port and the controller port. This little black thing here is a DC to DC converter to make sure the voltage is all correct. This over here is the audio amplifier. It gets line level audio straight in through here and amplifies it for the headphones or the speakers. The volume controls here too. In here, we've got the displays. These things are amazing. You can see a mirror here for each eyepiece. I'm not going to those. Back here there's an electromagnet which makes the mirror vibrate. There's a lens in here to make it so it looks bigger than it actually is. And this board here has the LED strip on the other side. This is what's responsible for the black and red image. Behind this plastic shield there's a bare chip. It has 224 red LEDs in a line about one centimeter long. These ribbon cables are a common failure on Virtual Boys. If you're lucky enough to get a Virtual Boy and it has lines missing from the screen it's actually possible to resolder these connections or you can buy complete reproduction ribbon cables. This is the top of the Virtual Boy. It has these two knobs that I showed you earlier. Focus which just moves the lenses and the IPD adjustment which is really stiff on mine Moves the entire displays in and out to match where your eyes are. It's not meant to be lubricated, but I think mine needs it. Oh, wow. It's way too much light 
but in there, the image exists. Over this side, you can just see that glowing in there. That's the entire display. It just needs to be swept across your vision. I can't do that very fast. The Virtual Boy wasn't a bad system. The games showed off some pretty good capabilities for 1995. Launch games are always made before the programmers really know how to get the most out of the hardware. And most of these games play great already. But without actually using a Virtual Boy, it's very hard to communicate to somebody how it actually looks, which is a problem I'm having doing this video. Looking into a Virtual Boy, you're in darkness, except for this red three-dimensional image in front of you. You have true depth perception. You can see how far away things are. Putting the ads on TV just shows a red and black image. It doesn't look great on a TV at all. Games using 3D like this really didn't start getting accepted until the games could look good in 2D too. Nintendo did eventually have another go at 3D 16 years later with the 3DS. But the 3DS games could be played in 2D and they looked great either way. 3D was just an extra bonus that made them look better. It meant that normal video game marketing still applied and you could show the games off in regular TV commercials. The Virtual Boy is also a bit difficult ergonomically. You can't strap it to your face like a modern VR headset, so most people ended up playing it hunched over. Some people got eye strain too, which I don't get affected by, but it was a big enough problem to create some pretty bad press when the Virtual Boy launched. This is a system that I wish had done better. I really like it.